currently inside the um, office space for where the contractors just store all their supplies. Um, I'm on site at Corbin's Corner in West Hartford working for a development uh, real estate group called Regency Centers. Um, they're the second largest property owner in the United States and they hired me through my friends at Amenta Emma Architects who are the architectural firm involved in the design process of the renovation here at Corbin's Corner. Um, and between J Crew and the Edge Fitness Club, I'm painting two walls, one's approximately three stories tall by 100 feet long, and the other is two stories tall by about 100 feet long as well. Um, and the theme um, comprised within the artwork is a lot of floral artwork, or floral subject matter, sorry, um, and mixed in with clouds. Uh, one wall is on the edge, uh, the, the gym, so that takes on um, a theme not directly related to the um, occupant themselves, but rather just the theme of the artwork that Regency wanted to uh, reflect on their, on their building um, and just create an open air um, environment where people can, they'll, they'll be picking tables eventually afterwards and um, Christmas lights displayed from on top, sort of like on Cornell Place actually. And that just to, to welcome uh, community in, people that might be shopping at Trader Joe's um, or shopping at one of the retail locations can just go gather there and really just enjoy themselves, enjoy the space and uh, enjoy the artwork. My name is Ben Keller and I am a fine artist and large scale mural artist, um, interior and exterior. And if you're interested in looking up more information on me, you can visit my website at benkellerart.com or my Instagram page, benkellerct. And if you guys want to see any more of my work, you can come to the Your Community Cares Graffiti Battle, which will be held on Pernell Place outside of Urban Lodge Brewery on April 23rd and I will be there amongst other street artists, graffiti artists, painting live so um, hope to see you there. In addition to the murals along Main Street and near the Cheney Mills, um, there is a Martin Luther King mural located um, on the side of a community center that the town owns. It was a former school. There's a Martin Luther King mural on one side and on the other uh, facade of that corner of the building. There are three social justice murals, one done by me of Harriet Tubman, the other two done by my friends R.C. and Corey Payne. And yeah, those were done in the same time frame as the three I listed earlier. So going back to that Martin Luther King mural that I spoke of earlier on the side of the community center in Manchester, that happened to be the first mural that I ever did in collaboration with Rise Up Group. And Matt Conway actually approached me a few days prior talking about the opportunity to potentially paint a mural of MLK for Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King Day that was approaching um, the next week. And so it was very, it was a very sensitive time frame, and we were reaching out to multiple towns and just so happened that Manchester was the first to respond with a um, potential surface that we could paint on. So that one marked the uh, beginning of my, you know, relation with Matt and, and uh, Rise Up Group, and also mark the beginning of the MLK 39 project that is still ongoing. And the significance of that name is there are going to be 39 murals um, to commemorate the 39 years of Martin Luther King Jr.'s life. They could find more information on that, most likely uh, at ctmurals.com. If any of you are interested in seeing a diverse range of artwork that was done by 
a couple dozen artists last year, um, we had the opportunity to paint a 24 garage doors on Pope Park Highway in Hartford. And if you are passing through Hartford on the highway, right off of 84 West, you can actually look to the right and see these garage doors, especially right now, the, the foliage is off the trees. And you can, I mean, you can stop by, it's a public, public street, public uh, building, and just enjoy um, a large span of great artwork that was all done in a day, I think, maybe two days tops for some, some of them. But um, that was a fun project that we did back in September. And yeah, that, that showcases and displays um, two dozen artists that are affiliated with Rise Up Group. So and yeah, go check those out if you're in the area. In regards to public art becoming um, involved and accepted more so now than ever, I think, in mainstream culture um, and amongst investor groups, cities, towns, everywhere. Um, I think when I was in high school, and when I was a senior in high school in 2010, there was a street art movie that came out called Exit to the Gift Shop. And it was, wasn't really a documentary on Banksy, but he was sort of the big name that sold the movie. And he's in the movie, but it's more so focused on this other guy named Mr. Brainwash. Um, but that movie hit Netflix and sort of introduced people to the phrase street art. And I'm not saying street art began because of that movie, it already existed years before, probably since the early 2000s. People have been painting murals in public art for centuries, but the street art culture was born out of the graffiti culture. And a lot of that was birthed in New York. Um, you know, the subway cars back in the 80s, um, the movie Style Wars. So that whole movement was already happening years prior to this, this actually the gift shop movie, but um, I remember seeing that and being so inspired by it. So around that time, 2010, 2012, I started painting a lot of um, public art pieces to basically increase my portfolio of work and just have experience painting on you know large scale surfaces outside that people could view um, without having to you know pay an admission fee to to go see it like you would inside a gallery or a museum and I think that's one of the biggest selling points of not the biggest sell selling point but one of the beauties of public art is that it's available for anyone to see and anyone can form their own opinion, um, interpret it in so many different forms, um, and just appreciate it. And a lot of these pieces are, you know, backgrounds for people to take selfies in front of or shoot music videos in front of. It's, it can be used on a, a wide array of, uh, of platforms. During 2021, I think it was, I don't know, throughout the duration of spring, summer, fall, um, I painted a dozen Jersey barriers for the town oh. um, that were put out across Main Street as um, public art installations for a lot of the restaurants that were expanding their seating outside on the patio. Um, so I think those are still around, if not on Main Street. That was, I think, the first project with Manchester in that. And then that evolved into Purnell Place um, between Lucky Taco and Suko Tai on Main Street. Um, short, short road to the back parking lot, but along that road is a nice brick facade. And I had the opportunity to paint that. And I had my eyes on that wall for years prior. And so I was very excited. Then after that project, so that was probably like, yeah, the summertime. The fall led into the Cheney Rail Trail mural 
and the columns um, that are under this bridge. Um, I don't know the road, but it's behind the loft apartments in the Cheney Mill district um, where a lot of residents live. So I think, yeah, that, I think a couple more projects, but those are like the three large ones, I think. So if you guys are interested in seeing more of my work or keeping up with me, again, you can check out my website, benkellerart.com, or follow me on Instagram or Facebook at just benkellerct. And um, I have a couple big projects coming up this, this spring and this summer that I'm really excited about. Um, if you want to hear about more information regarding those projects, um, come visit me and let's have a, a chat at the Graffiti Battle on uh, April 23rd in Manchester. Mm -hmm.